We have two containers of emulsified crude oil, which is a byproduct of oil production, a stable combination of water and oil, which remain bound in this state for years. The test sample is irradiated. The element will treat one container for seven days, making the water molecules lessen their contact with the oil molecules. After four days, we compare the test sample and the control. The water has separated from the oil. At the boundary between the water and oil phases, there are crater-like formations. This means that the separation process is continuing. The fields we use to influence the water are comparable in intensity with the electromagnetic field of the human heart. On the seventh day of treatment, the experiment is finished. The water has completely separated from the oil. Experts estimate that oil men have accumulated around a billion tons of emulsified crude oil. It cannot be used for industrial purposes. Ultimately, they get rid of the emulsion, pouring it right onto the ground. And then, horrible sludge lakes are formed in the oil fields. In the language of the Pemon Indian tribe in Venezuela, Roraima is translated as the mother of all waters. A group of Russian biophysicists set out for this destination in January 2005 to collect a unique sample of water, which scientists say has never been in direct contact with human beings. Such water exists in only one place on Earth, in Venezuela. According to one hypothesis, a continent called Gondwana existed in the southern hemisphere during the Paleozoic era. Powerful tectonic processes occurring in the Earth's crust 3.5 million years ago split it into several parts. As a result of these changes, some segments of the continent sank, while those resting on granite substrates remained at their previous level. Elevated plateaus were formed, which the Indians called tepuis, meaning pillars. Roraima is the largest of them. It's a really remote place, very hard to get to. Three days of travel through the savanna and then the jungles. Then you climb an 800-meter wall. It takes a certain amount of enthusiasm. Therefore, we can say that the water we have there is in a unique, virgin state. There is always a large cloud over Roraima. As evening approaches, a light haze appears. When the moon comes out from behind the mountains, the mist begins to glow with an even blue light. And in that light, it is visible how fine droplets of moisture are hanging in the still air. The slightest breath of a breeze and this watery dust forms into drops. This is the origin of the rain which rushes down in countless waterfalls. So today is January 30th, 2005. Water collection number 16. Then we shall pack it all up in foil. And in this form, this water will hold its energy for several days with the air of these places. Then we'll arrive in St. Petersburg, 
and will calmly carry out our laboratory analysis several thousand miles away, and only then will we be able to draw any conclusions. Professor Korotkov's laboratory has developed an instrument that can determine the energetics of water. It works on the basis of the Curlian effect. Everything that enters a strong electromagnetic field begins to emit light. The greater energy the object possesses, the brighter it shines. The water from Venezuela was compared with ordinary drinking water. We can say that this water is not double, not triple, but it is 40,000 times more active. So these are really two fundamentally different substances. And water of this type, this water, which immediately activates the body, it activates the whole system. That's why there, where the Indians, despite the deprivation in which they live, live very long lives and are very happy, they absolutely do not want civilization to come to them. In the late autumn of 1632, a poor farmer named Gens from the village of Enningen in Hessen, an orphan who didn't remember his parents or where he was born, set off for southern Italy to seek a better lot. His route ran through the city of Waldschut am Rhein in the eparchy of Constance. Suddenly, Gens was literally stabbed by the feeling that these places were very directly related to him. It was as if the shepherd's legs led him where he should go, which was into a grove. Entering it, Gens looked around. Not far away, a spring was coming right out of the ground. The young man approached it, bent down, and drank the water. Many years later, he told his grandchildren the story of how the water had given him back his memory so that he recollected these places, and his father and mother, and the house in which he was born. Modern science maintains that the water structure of each person's body is identical to the structure of the water in the place where they were born. Therefore, our internal connection to our place of birth is preserved throughout our life. And that means that the concept of homeland has not only a lofty poetical meaning, but also a quite specific physical content. Nowhere in the world is water the same breaking its way to the surface through minerals and ores, water assimilates the vibrations of the soil and information about its specific biological and energetic features. We tested a sample of purified municipal water, which is sold in large bottles, and the producer puts a label on them which says it is the best water in the world. But it is empty and dead. True, it's pure and it's good, and some minerals have been added, but this is dead water, in which there is no energetics, and there is no life. Most likely, people do not sense any particular difference between naturally pure and artificially purified water. But any animal will always choose water from a spring, because this water is loaded with natural energies. Not long ago, yet another unique property of natural water was discovered. It turns out that such natural water is flammable. The burning of natural water